Welcome back. Here's another college algebra lesson, this time in section 3.3. We're going to be doing zeros of polynomial functions. We're going to talk about the factor theorem, the rational zero theorem. We're going to talk about the number of zeros and multiplicity. We'll learn the conjugate zero theorem. We'll learn how to find zeros of a polynomial function, and we'll talk about Descartes' rule of signs. We've got plenty to do in this section, so let's get started. First, let's talk about the factor theorem. This is really a very common sense theorem that you probably already have a good idea about, even though you may not have ever called it the factor theorem and you may not have ever thought about it in relation to polynomials. But here's the idea. I could ask you, is 5 a factor of 13? And you would probably right away say, no, it's not. And the way that you know that is because you know that when you divide 5 into 13, it leaves a remainder. So you would say, no, 5 is not a factor of 13. Well, the same thing works with polynomials. We can say if f of k equals 0, then x minus k is a factor of the polynomial f of x. In other words, if you divide the polynomial by x minus k and you get a remainder of 0, then x minus k is a factor. That makes sense with what we know about remainders. And also it works the other way around. If x minus k is a factor, then we know for sure that f of k equals 0. So for k to be a 0 of our polynomial means the same thing as for x minus k to be a factor of the polynomial. The two things are completely interchangeable. Here's example one. This says determine whether x minus one is a factor of each polynomial. There are two of them, so we'll do one on this slide and one on the next slide. This says f of x equals two x to the fourth plus three x squared minus five x plus seven. Now we'll know that x minus one is a factor if we can divide this polynomial by it and get a remainder of zero. So let's do the synthetic division with one in the box and see what kind of remainder we get. So we'll put down our coefficients, and remember we have to include every coefficient of every term, even if it doesn't show up. We'll have to have the x to the fourth coefficient and the x to the third, which will be a zero, and then x squared, x, and constant. So here are our coefficients, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and constant. We're dividing by x minus one, so let's put one in the box. And now we'll do the synthetic division. Pull down the 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And since we have a remainder here, we know that x minus 1 did not go evenly into this polynomial. And therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor of that polynomial. Now here's part B of example 1. We're still trying to decide if x minus 1 is a factor, but this time we have a different polynomial. So we know that we'll need to do the synthetic division with 1 in the box. And let's go ahead and put down our coefficients. We have here the x to the 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st power, and constant. So we won't need any zeros. And we're dividing by x minus 1, so we'll put 1 in the box. And now pull down multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. We got a zero here. And that tells us that x minus one did go evenly into this polynomial. And that tells us that x minus one is a factor of that polynomial. And that's all there is to it. So the remainder theorem and the factor theorem really work together on this. Now in example two, we're doing sort of a similar thing, but then we're taking it a step further. This says factor f of x into linear factors if negative three is a zero of f. Okay, now they're telling us that negative three is a zero, but from that we also know that x plus three will be a factor. You see how that works? If we know that negative three is a zero, we know that x minus negative three will go evenly into our polynomial, so we know that it's going to be a factor. All right, so let's go ahead and do the synthetic division here with negative three in the box. And I'll just make sure we've got all our coefficients, three, two, one, constant, we do. So let's put those down, let's put negative three in the box. Now run through the synthetic division, pull down, 
multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And that's not a surprise. We knew that was going to happen because we knew that negative 3 was a 0. But now what this does is it separates our function into two factors. See, I think this is really cool because this is something that we could not have factored on our own. But because they told us that negative 3 was a 0, we're able to do some factoring we could not have done using any other method. All right, so now we know that our function, which used to look like this, has now been broken into two factors. The x minus negative 3, or we write x plus 3, and the other factor, which is the quotient of our division process. So 6x squared plus x minus 1. Remember, when you divide, your quotient multiplied by your divisor gives you the thing you divided into. So our function has now been separated into two factors. And this factor is quadratic, which means it's small enough in degree now that we can factor it on our own. So we don't need any more help to get it factored. Let's go ahead and separate this trinomial into two binomials. I'm going to start here by saying 6x squared is probably 3x times 2x. The signs in my parentheses need to be different. And I'm going to put the plus sign here because 1 times 1 will make 1. And that way, the outer plus inner is going to add up to positive 1x. OK, so these two factors came from this trinomial. And this factor came from the 0 that they gave us. And even though we won't take the time to do it, I guarantee you that if you multiplied all these pieces back together, this would be your answer. Now this is a practice one that you can do by yourself, so if you would like to try it on your own, go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so here we go. Factor this polynomial into linear factors if 2 is a 0 of f. Well, the fact that 2 is a 0 means I know now that x minus 2 is a factor. So I want to do the synthetic division with 2 in the box, x minus 2 is going to go evenly into this polynomial. Let's run through it. Pull down the 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And now we have our polynomial f separated into two factors, the x minus 2 and this factor, which is 2x squared plus x minus 15. Okay, now this is quadratic, and they asked us to separate that into linear factors. So we'll need to factor this, but we don't need synthetic division for that. We can do this on our own. So I'm going to factor my trinomial into two binomials. 2x squared becomes 2x times 1x. The signs need to be different. And 15 can be 5 times 3. Now let's put the 5 here and the 3 here. But my sign is wrong. My outer plus inner is now adding up to negative 1x. The 1 is good, but it needs to be positive. So I'll just switch the signs. And now my outer plus inner is going to add up to positive 1x. That's good. And so this factoring is correct. Now notice that we would not have been able to work either of the last two examples if they had not given us a 0 to get us started on the synthetic division process. It was only by using the zero they gave us that we were able to get the trinomial that we could factor. So if they don't give us a zero, how do we get started? That's where the rational zeros theorem comes in. Let's read it together. It says, suppose f is a polynomial function with integer coefficients, and suppose p over q is a rational number written in lowest terms. Okay, so we've got a function with integer coefficients, that's our favorite kind, and we've got a number that's a fraction that can't be reduced further than it already is. This says, if p over q is a 0 of f, that means p is a factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. And I'll show you what I mean on the next slide. Now here I have a polynomial 
with integer coefficients, and I've already factored it for us into 3x plus 4 times 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. Now with the function being factored like this, it makes it very easy to find the zeros. All we have to do is set each factor equal to zero and solve. So if the first parentheses equals zero, then we get an x value of negative 4 over 3. And if the second parentheses equals zero, we get an x value of 1 half. And if the third parentheses equals zero, we get an x value of negative 5. So these three numbers are the zeros of our function. Now notice that the top number in each case came from the constant term in each parentheses. And these numbers are the constant terms here because they are all factors of the constant term from the polynomial. So each of these top numbers is a factor of 20. And each of the bottom numbers is in the bottom because it was the coefficient of the x. And you can't see the 1 here, but it's there. So these bottom numbers are here because they were coefficients of x, and they were all coefficients of x because they're all factors of 6x to the third. So again, for each zero, the top number was a factor of the constant term from the polynomial, and the bottom number was a factor of the leading term from the polynomial. And it's always going to have to work like that because for any linear factor that you have, the zero for that factor is always going to have to be the constant number over the coefficient number. Now what does the rational zeros theorem mean for us? Well it means that if we are asked to find the zeros of a polynomial and we don't have a zero to help us get started, we can generate our own list of potential zeros by making a list of p numbers, which are all the factors of the constant, and a list of q numbers, which are all the factors of the leading coefficient. And then any p over q combination we can make is a possible zero. Now keep in mind that this process of listing all the possible rational zeros only gives us rational numbers. It only gives us, in other words, fractions and whole numbers. It won't help us find non-real complex roots and it won't help us find any irrational zeros that would come from using the quadratic formula. But it will help us find any rational ones. So let's do that here. Let's make a list of possible rational zeros. So we'll make a list of p numbers, which are all the factors of the constant. And that, in this case, is only 1 and 2. And we'll make a list of q numbers, which are going to be all the factors of 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6. And now we will make a list of every possible combination of a p number over a q number. So I'm going to put 1 over each of these numbers. 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 6. And then I'm going to go back and put 2 over each of these numbers. 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, 2 over 6. Now, I don't have to keep the whole list. I can get rid of any numbers that are duplicates. For example, I have... 1 over 1 and 2 over 2, which are both equivalent to 1. I have 1 third and 2 sixths, which are both equivalent to 1 third. Now as I recopy the list and take out the duplicates, I also have to remember that each of these potential zeros could either be a positive or a negative zero. So in front of each number that we write down, let's put a plus minus symbol. So I have 1 in my list. I'm going to copy down the 1 and put a plus minus in front of it. Positive 1 is a potential 0, and so is negative 1. And then I will copy down 1 half, and I'll put a plus minus in front of it. And then 1 third, which takes out both of these numbers, positive or negative 1 third, positive or negative 1 sixth, positive or negative 2, and positive or negative 2 thirds. And this is our list of possible rational zeros. Now that we have our list of possible rational zeros or possible rational roots that we made on the last slide, let's start picking numbers out of this list and trying them out to see if they are in fact roots. This is a trial and error process. There's really no reason to suppose one number will work better than another one. It's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. You just have to keep trying different things until you find what works. 
Now what I have found is in our textbook and in most college algebra textbooks, they're going to give us at least one whole number that works. So there may be fractions that work, but I would stay away from the fractions and I would try all the whole numbers first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with positive 1. I'm going to see if that works and if it doesn't I'll try negative 1. And then if that doesn't work, I'll try positive 2 and then negative 2. And as a very last resort, if I had to go to one of these fractions, I would do that. But I'm going to do all the whole numbers first. And we may not have to do them all. We probably will find one that works before we try them all. But here we go. Here are our coefficients, the x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x squared, x, and constant. And let's try 1. So when I do the synthetic division with 1... Oh, good luck. I found that 1 is a 0 of this polynomial, which means that x minus 1 is a factor. And now I have my polynomial factored into two pieces. I have x minus 1, and I also have 6x to the third plus 13x squared plus x minus 2. So this is how our polynomial has broken down. Now, this is still too big of a degree for me to factor, so I need to choose another number from the list and see which one of these numbers goes into this polynomial now. And so we'll do that here. Now, I've just recopied the list of possible rational roots, and I've recopied our factoring. And now I'm going to see if negative 1 is a 0 of this polynomial. So I've already copied those coefficients here and I'm going to try negative 1 and let's see if negative 1 is a 0 of this cubic polynomial and I see that it's not. Negative 1 is not a root so I'm going to move on to the next whole number in my list which is positive 2 and let's see if positive 2 works. And no, positive 2 does not work either because I was looking for a 0 here and I didn't get one. So now I'm going to try negative 2. Pull down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And yes, finally, I see that negative 2 is another 0 of this polynomial. So now I have my polynomial factored into x minus 1 times x plus 2 times 6x squared plus x minus 1. Now undoubtedly there are two more zeros in this quadratic polynomial and possibly those two zeros are in this list, but I don't want to have to do any more synthetic division. Now that we've gotten this down to a quadratic factor, it's small enough that we can factor it ourselves using the reverse FOIL process that you already know so well. So let's keep our x minus 1 and x plus 2, and let's break our trinomial down into two binomials. So 6x squared is going to be 3x times 2x. Having a negative here means that the signs in our parentheses need to be different. 1 is going to be 1 times 1. And now let's see if our outer plus inner adds up to positive 1x. Outer times outer will be 3x. Inner times inner will be negative 2x. 3x minus 2x is positive 1x, so this factoring looks good. And look, if we took the time to get the other two zeros, the zero from this factor would be one-third, which was in our list, and this one would be negative one-half, which was also in our list. So it just so happened that this quadratic had rational zeros, but they don't all. So if we did have a quadratic that we couldn't factor, we'd have to use the quadratic formula to find the last couple of zeros. And this slide just says what I was talking about on the last slide. Remember in the last example, once we got our biggest factor down to 6x squared plus x minus 1, we were able to finish off the problem by factoring it directly. If we had not been able to easily factor that, then we could have used the quadratic formula to find the last two solutions, and that would have given us the last two factors. Now here is a practice one that you can do on your own. The instructions say list all the possible rational zeros. That's your P over Q list. 
then it says find all the rational zeros, and then it says factor f of x. Now I have a little bit of an issue with the instructions here because it makes it sound like you're going to get all the rational zeros from the synthetic division process, but you know from the last couple that we did together, you get the first zero, maybe the first two zeros from the synthetic division process, but you finish it by factoring directly. We just were talking about that. So you're not really going to find all the rational zeros and then factor. You're probably going to get one zero and then finish the factoring and then find the rest of the zeros. Whatever order you end up doing this in is okay. Don't feel like you have to do part B and then you have to do part C. As long as you get it all done, the order that you do it in really doesn't matter. If you want to try this one on your own, go ahead and pause the video. And now if you've done that, let's go through it together. So first, list all the possible rational zeros. That's our P over Q list. So we'll make a list of P numbers. Those are the factors of 10. And we'll make a list of Q numbers. Those are the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. And we always like to see that because that makes it really easy to build our P over Q list. The possible rational zeros are every possible combination of P over Q that we can make, positive and negative. So P over Q is going to be 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 5 over 1, and 10 over 1. And those just simplify to whole numbers. And now I'll put the plus minus in front of them. So we have eight numbers here. Now remember, this is a third degree polynomial, so it's only at most going to have three zeros. But we have eight numbers to choose from. So it's a trial and error process trying to find the ones that work. I always start with one and work my way through the list. So let's see if one is a zero of this polynomial. I'll go through the synthetic division process. And I find out that no, 1 is not a 0 of this polynomial. Therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor. Let's try negative 1. Go through the synthetic division process. And I see that negative 1 is a 0 of this polynomial. So that means x plus 1 is a factor. And the other factor is x squared minus 3x minus 10. And so I've written that here. Now this is quadratic, so it's small enough for me to try to factor it. Let's go ahead and break that quadratic down into two linear factors. x squared is x times x. The signs need to be different. 10 will become 5 times 2. And so let's make sure that our middle term is adding up to negative 3x. It is. And so now the zeros that we get are negative 1 and negative 2 and positive 5. And so we have all three zeros. I knew I could only get three zeros from here because this is third degree, and we have them all. This slide is just a reminder that the rational zeros theorem only gives us the possible rational zeros. Remember, it gives us a long list of possible zeros. It doesn't tell us whether these numbers are actual zeros. We had to go through the synthetic division and the factoring process to find the actual zeros. But the possible list of numbers is a little longer. Also, remember that our rational zero theorem starts by assuming that we have integer coefficients. If you ever ran across one that had fractional coefficients, you could simply multiply both sides by whatever common denominator you have. Now, your new polynomial will not be the same one that you started with. However, it will have the same zeros as the one you started with. So you could use the rational zero theorem to find the zeros of the one with integer coefficients and then apply those zeros to the original polynomial.